the ultimate Iron Man challenge. Oh my god. One deck, all formats. Just lose every round because my opponent's like, judge, my opponent's deck is 2020. <laughs> This is yours. Uh, Congrats. I did. Your parents were watching you. I know they were. <laughs> <laughs> you just see it now. Jared, don't um, play that card. And Nate was also watching. So. <laughs> I think Nate was. At least he was before. Yeah, that's the thing. This is the last call for the second Doomtown qualifier. Last call. Attention Doomtown That's players. One. Okay, I'm joined by Jeff Drew, who's the winner of our Invitational. I'll just read the... Uh, my right. I'll just read the, the prize fluff here. And With the entirety of Rockagan threatened by the horrors of the Dark prizes. Prophecy, many please find please tremendous frustration in the fact that the prophecy in its entirety remains unknown. Only pieces have been gleaned, and those are scattered among the great monks and Shigenjo of the Empire. Despite the attempts of the Brotherhood and their allies, much of the Heaven's message remains unknown. Until now. The winner of the clan will be the first to gather all the pieces of Dark Prophecy, discovering the sole prophet to whom it was revealed in its entirety, and for the first time gain a full understanding of what the threat facing the Empire truly is. So, Jeff, which clan were you representing, first off? Um, I guess, so I picked a crab person because okay. I wanted to pick myself and he's a crab. So I guess crab is the answer to that question. Um, in the draft itself, I played Mantis Dragon. Um, this was the Dynasty deck. Um, I only played three holdings, which is incredibly greedy, but it worked because you only really need to see one. Um, and ideally, it's a peaceful retreat, so you can just immediately start gaining two every turn. Um, 
I mean, I played almost the exact same deck in the Swiss and went 3-1. Um, I lost an honor mirror where I didn't buy any holdings. Um, I played five that, but they were all three, th three for threes. I had no four for fours. Um, the dynasty deck is entirely force penalties because that's the strongest battle action you can take in this format. Um, but I mean, it's really redundant. I have a lot of four ofs. Um, yeah, you go. You go. Well, you go four of the best common in the set in yes. Tomeko, <laughs> which um, is quite a good place to start. However, wait. Let's let's start with. Let's start right at the beginning of the draft. How how do your first few picks go? What what, um, what options do you have available to you? I I didn't pick this until very late, but at the beginning, I just I picked one of these really early. I knew I wanted to be in this deck because I think that this is, this is the best honor deck. Kitsuki Mizukube. Mizukabe, yeah, sorry. He's referring to that. Um, my first, like... I think my first eight picks were all just this person and then fate actions. Um, so you were, you were picking force penalties very highly then? Yes, I picked strategies incredibly highly. Um, and then, apart from that, I picked... Uh, dissension in command, incredibly high, because there's nothing that you can really do about it except for a breed apart and ruby ascendance. I think are the only cards that negate force penalties. Um, I picked immaterial weapons, very high, um, and also um, an honored guest, very high. Yeah. Those honored guests helping with your phoenix splash as well. So this, these were only because. This is only 16 cards, and I needed four cards that I could possibly proclaim, and I had four honored guests, so I just threw them in. Um, I picked this fairly early, the Fujisawa, because he's 5 chi, and I was hoping to get, I guess it's called the Indignity of Arrest. The, the minus, minus four sequel to the chi of one of your personalities, right? Yes. Um, yeah because it counts your person's chi, it doesn't care about magistrates. And I didn't know that until like two weeks ago. Um, so I mean, when, I'm trying to remember like the actual order I picked everything. Um, I picked Honored Guest, like these three very high. Um, after that, uh, Virtuous Victory, because it gains honor. Um, it's also just a massive four swing in and of itself. Yeah, like it's, it's a four four swing and it gains an honor. Um, Oh, I picked not the end anytime I saw one. Because it's a range one, and then when it blows up something, you draw a card. And it just combos with all those force penalties you've got. Yes. And um, uh, let's talk about Ichigo Sensei. Your your dynasty side lines up so well with Ichigo. You're getting plus one province strength off it anyway. And then anytime you're killing one of their guys, you're gaining another one as well. You had so many of these effects that were just snowballing between the force penalties and the strikes it, and the amount of destined guys you've got three. seven oh she's just expendable oh sorry so you've got three destined guys four expendable guys so you're just cantripping a lot as well and it's just yeah so it, it was just getting out of control of your opponents there like um brandon there you could tell he felt very pressured to attack early because he knew going long he wasn't favored yeah so one of the best things that you can do with this deck is the fact that you have four honored guests, and if you can buy a peaceful retreat and a four gold three person honor guy on turn one, you're going to gain five for the rest of the the rest of the game. So you're going to rock it really fast and force people onto attacking you really early. Whether or not they know whether that's correct or not, generally it's not. You can force them to attack when they don't really want to, so you can just kill them in battle. With this is this is a classic misassignment of role equals game loss. Yeah, like um. I mean, we play tested this set for drafts, and Anthony drafted almost this deck every single week. And so, which Anthony is this? Uh, Anthony Lawrence. Anthony um, Lawrence. He was not the Invitational. I mean, the cards are... I don't remember what most of these cards did. I remember just knowing that Dragon was really good because they had four gold, three person honor people, and then Mantis just has um, her. Um, most people are playing Exodus of the Spider, so she gets to trigger a lot. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, she triggers a lot. There was a round in, there was a game in the round of Swiss that my opponent Exodus when I had, well, my other deck had five of her, but um, I gained three fourths off of him exiting, which yeah. won me the game. 
Um, Kitsune Naruko, by the way, is an yes. uncommon. So getting, getting five of her is running pretty good there. Yes. <laughs> um, I opened two of them and then got past the rest. Um, but yeah. I mean, it's, the deck just plunges force and tries to tie battles. It's like even when your opponent deals with you guys, you've got a couple of narrow passages over there to, to really um, blow out an opponent going wide. Yeah, so you can punish assignment pretty well if they... Um, I think it was in top four. It might have been against Brandon. He assigned like four guys against me, and I was able to defend with one of these and then stick a narrow passage and just be too big for him to handle. Mm. Um, plus virtuous victories, but yeah. Cool. So, you, like you say, you're on the draft playtest team. So, how often do you draft? Um, we're not anymore. This was the last set we playtested. Um, but we would draft every week, um, eight of us. And I mean, the cards changed every week, and they were really different. But yeah, we draft every week. And it's been about a, a year since you last drafted it, right? Uh, yes. Um, I had never drafted this set physically until two weeks ago. Okay, brilliant. And well, um, I just completely forgot that this was a deck until I saw Mark playing it, uh, Mark Armitage, and he was playing it in that draft, and he just destroyed me. And I was like, all right, honor is a deck, so I should probably play it. Um, Brilliant. Um, so, Wilds, you looking forward to it? Uh, you mean the constructed event? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. You've not got anything lined up then. So, I have a seed, of course, but I might just draft instead, because I have. I feel my chances of winning that event are higher than winning constructed, but I might just play any deck in constructed. Like, I might borrow a deck, or try to borrow a deck, or play the deck I brought me. The deck I brought with me is Unicorn, um, the Dragon Sensei. I don't remember the Akio Terror Sensei, and it's pretty fun. It's not very good, but it's fun. Okay. Um, this was the event that I really wanted to play because I mean I like drafts and I feel like I have a I don't know I feel like I'm good at it. So. This is one of the toughest fields of the week as well. Yeah, I mean Chris didn't play in it and Anthony Lawrence didn't play in it, and like those are the two best drafters in our playtest team. Um, and neither of them played in it. I mean, Chris didn't play in it because it's not a good idea for him to play in it. Um, Anthony just didn't have a seed because he hasn't really played very much, but I mean, I felt pretty pretty well going into the event, but it worked out. Yeah, it did. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you for coming on the stream and chatting with us. Of course. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you.